So let's have a look at something that has more than two species in it. Let's take chlorine, Cl2, reacting with potassium bromide. Well, it's a displacement reaction. We did it when we looked at C12. The chlorine is more reactive than the bromine, so the chlorine is going to run away with the potassium, just like poor Mr. Baker, the bromine, is going to be left behind by itself. So the first thing I need to do is balance the equation. I need to balance my bromines, and I need to balance my chlorines and my potassiums. Right, everything is balanced now. Now I need to assign oxidation numbers. So chlorine is in its elemental form, zero. Potassium is plus one, it's a group one uh, metal. Bromine here is minus one. Potassium, plus one. Chlorine, minus one. Bromine, as an element, is zero, because all elements are zero. Now, there's three species here. You can't write half equations for three species because you can only have two halves to make a whole. So you can only ever write half equations for two things. So one of these things hasn't changed. Chlorine has gone from zero to plus one. And the potassium has gone from plus one to plus one. No change. The bromine has gone from minus one to zero. That's a change. So this potassium and this potassium is what we call a spectator ion. In other words, in other words, it did not get involved in the reaction at all. It was a plus one at the start, it was a plus one at the end, it just stood by and it didn't actually, its electrons didn't change at all. So we don't include it in our ionic equation. Great, now we only have two species that we need to write about, which is exactly what we need. We need two species for two halves of the equation. So let's start focusing on Cl. Chlorine existed in its elemental form and it went to... Uh, two chlorine ions, so minus one. It gained electrons, so the electrons must be over this side. Well, there's two of them, and each one gained one. So two E minus plus two chlorine atoms makes two chlorine ions. Let's look at bromine now. Bromine existed as a minus one ion at the start. We had two of them. They ended up as Br2 in its elemental form. So it must have given away those two electrons to chlorine, so 2e- minus were given out by the bromine. Have I got my electrons on either side? Yes. Therefore, I can cancel them out, and we've definitely got a redox reaction, because one's given, one's gained. Now I can remember... Do you want to go on a date, Mr Chemist? Sorry, I only do redox. Increase is oxidation. Decrease is reduction. So, chlorine has gone from zero to minus one. It's a decrease. So, decrease is reduction. It has been reduced. Bromine is oxidation. Bromine has increased because it's gone from minus one to zero, so it must have been oxidized. If you don't like I only do redox, then you can do oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain. So you can see that the chlorine here has gained electrons, it's got more negative, it's gained electrons. And the bromine gave its electrons away. You can see here, it gave its electrons away. So it has been reduced, reduction is gain. So, um, sorry, it gave its electrons away, it's been oxidized, oxidation is loss. So whichever way around you use, it's really easy to identify what's been oxidized and what's been reduced. So 
Now, shall we put them together and make a full ionic equation? Remember, we don't include spectator ions, so we can forget about the potassium now. We've got everything on this side, chlorine as an element, plus two bromine ions make bromine as an element plus two chlorine ions. That, ladies and gentlemen, is your full ionic equation. And this was the spectator ion, the potassium. So we didn't include it. Hope that helped.